Right, so before I begin, just want to check if you have any questions regarding the tutorial. So for those who are still struggling with the integral, so I think maybe for five marks I was being a bit unfair, but what I wanted to check was whether you can set up the problem. However, if you still have some difficulty uh, with the resulting integral, um, so this is what I find. Um, you can check if you are getting the same result. So the integral from zero to a of sine squared um, n pi x over a x squared is, I found this to be a cubed over 24 n cubed pi cubed 4 n cubed pi cubed minus 6 n pi minus one to the n, right? Um, so I won't really be giving that marks in terms of the resulting integral and um, you, you can make use of this result. Just check that it's correct. And then the other integral, which was the integral of Uh, I think integral from zero to a. So that I managed to get. Uh, so let me strike everything out. So the integral from zero to a of x sine n pi x over a dx is gave you a squared over eight pi squared n squared minus one minus two n squared pi squared plus minus one to the n. Um, so in, in, in an exam, I'll try to make sure that I give you these integrals because the entire cause is not really to check whether you can do the, this long type of integral. So I'll always make sure that I give them to you. However, the problems of diagonalization that you will have to do by hand. So if there are no further questions, I think I can start with the topic for today. So if you remember what we were trying to do with the last time was that uh, we always had a Hamiltonian. So there were two parts to this Hamiltonian. So either had um, eight Zeman plus the effects due to the fine structure uh, constant. And depending on which one was the dominant one, we then found two sets either were using the uh, set of quantum numbers J and M, or you were using uh, what I call J1, M1, J2, and M2, depending on whether the magnetic field was, uh, whether the internal magnetic field was the one that was dominant or whether the internal one was uh, the one which was dominant. But for the intermediate uh, Zeeman effect, none of these effects is actually the dominant one. So we don't really know which set of quantum, uh, which set of good quantum numbers that we, where we have to use. So what we are instead going to do is that we're just going to write this as a linear combination in terms of the other ones. So in order for me to do that, I first have to uh, review the theory of addition of angular momentum. So let me just uh, share the whiteboard. Sharing. Uh, um, right. 
So let's just revise. Uh, so you start with, say you wanted to add uh, two angular momentum, uh, J1 and J2. So let's say that you have J, it's going to be given by J1 plus J2 vectors, right? Now, if, and this could refer maybe to an electron and that might refer to the proton, but these two variables are independent of each other. So you know that they will, J1 will satisfy commutation relation, J1, uh, J1y of this form equals to I H bar, J, um, this would be J, J1z and similarly for uh, J2. So you end up with the fact that uh, the variables J1 squared, you know this, that because this uh, angular momentum are independent of each other, you can check that J1 squared and J1 um, Z, that they, they commute. Similarly, the other set of angular momentum numbers that also commute would be J2. Uh, squared and also J two Z, and because these two uh, quantum numbers don't really talk to each other, they can be simultaneously um, diagonalized. So I'm saying that you can form a set of commuting uh, variables, which would be J one squared, J two squared, uh, J two Z, and also J one Z. So this can be diagonalized simultaneously and the eigenvalues, you denote them, they will just be a direct product of uh, these two set. Right? So J1, J2, M1, M2. Right? And as I was saying that this will just be a direct product. So you get J1, M1, tensor product, but uh, I think I'll just leave it as J2, M2, right? Now you are going to form the new angular momentum and this new angular momentum, so the other part that will also be commuting will be J, uh, J squared of the total angular momentum, Jz, and you can also check that J, uh, J1 squared and also J2 squared. Right. So there is also this four set of variables that also form a commuting set. So you can automatically diagonalize them. And this new um, set, uh, you label them by JM. But if you want to be precise, this is basically, you can also include that um, these quantum numbers, J1 and J2, right? So this will give you J1, M1, and J, M. But for what I will be doing later on, I will be ignoring this, this variable. So I'll just label them as J, M. And what you want to do in the uh, intermediate Zeeman effect is that you actually want to start with these either quantum numbers J, M, and you want to expand them. But the other uh, direct product J, M, J1, M1, tensor product with J2, M2, they also form a complete set. So this means that you do the usual trick, you insert a one there. So this will give you J, M, and that one will be the fact that the original direct product was complete. So you write that as, um, let's say, J1, J2, M1, M2, J1, J2, M1, M2, right? So this is just um, what you are referring to as the one because the original direct product J1, M1, J2, M2, where was complete. But there's also this quantum number. So you sandwich that between the states, J, M, right? 
and then these things as I did in the first lecture, this is just a C number, which is what we call the Klebs cotton coefficient. So if you want, you write. So what I'm trying to do is that we have to first, so for the n equals to two, which is the one that I will be doing for the Zeeman effect, you have to use the full theory of degenerate perturbation theory in order for you to do that. So we are basically using this set of quantum numbers. What we need are these Klebs cotton coefficients. That's the first thing that we have to do. Unfortunately, calculating Klebs cotton coefficients is one of those um, messy, tedious things that you have to do. And I will show you how to do them. But um, maybe if you don't follow, I will give you the final uh, result that will be expressing is um, Klebs cotton coefficient. Okay, so how then will you go about computing these these numbers? So what you do is that um, let's just say something. So there are selection rules. I'm sure you've seen that you know that m, which is this m, can be expressed in terms of this. It has to be a sum. So M has to be M1 plus M2. If this condition is not met, then the Klebs cotton coefficients are automatically zero. And similarly, you find that your angular momentum J1 has to be between uh, smaller than J and also smaller than um, say J1 plus J2. So if these two selection rules are not met, then your Klebs cotton coefficient then will be automatically um, then. But how, as to how you go about um, calculating these things, you insert a J plus, so, and then you define this uh, recursion relation. Let me just, Um, is everyone happy with what I've done so far? Right. We are trying to calculate. Um, just close this. We are trying to calculate the Klebs cotton coefficients for in moving from J M into the basis which is being labeled by J J one, J two, M one, and M two. Right. So to do that, you have to first derive this recursion relation. So to do to get this re recursion relation, what you do is that you um, hit your equations with J plus. Now the set the operator J plus. So let me just. Okay. So let's say that you have J J one. J2, M1, M2, right? You are going to hit this with J plus, right? minus, acting on J M, right? Now you know how J plus acts on these ones, right? You did this raising and lowering operator. You are then going to hit on J M, and when you do that, you get the relation h bar square root j minus plus m j plus minus m plus one. Right. So this is when it's acting on um, j m. But because these are raising and lowering operators, they are going to change m by plus or minus one. So the final thing that you end up with will be um, j1, j2, m1, m2, right? and then you get j, m, and let me write, this is m plus or minus one, right? because these are just the usual raising and lowering operators. However, you know that j1, j plus or minus can also be written as J1 plus because J is just the sum of the angular momentum plus J2 plus or minus, right? And if you write them in this form, 
you can then let them act on the direct product J1, J2, M1, M and M2. And when you do that, you get uh, H bar, right? So J1 plus will be a thing on this. So J2 will be the one setting this set of quantum numbers. So they are going to, um, here you're going to have J2 plus M2 similarly. So you get plus J2 plus M2 minus J2 minus plus M2 plus one. And then get the plus Gordon coefficients J1, J2, M1 and then M2 gets to be raised by plus or minus one. So this gives you a recursion relation relating J plus M right, with the other numbers J1 plus um, J1 plus M1 and similarly J2 plus M2. So for this problem, which to go back to our problem, what we have is we have L plus or minus a half. Then we are trying to relate this with the M. So what we want to do is that we are going to set in this recursion relation that I just wrote, right? We are going to set M L to be M minus M2. Let me just erase everything. Um, yeah, this will be very long, but the question relation that you will end up with, let me write it down. I think this is the summary that the recursion relation that you end up with will be L plus or minus a half. M will give you square root of L minus plus M plus a half over to L plus one L half M plus a half minus a half right, plus or minus. And you can already see that this is already starting to resemble the formula psi one to psi eight. Right? So this will give you plus or minus square root of L plus or minus M plus half over two L plus one L half M minus half and half. Right. So this is the final formula. I'll type everything out in the slides. Right. So this is the result that we have. But we have to set let let's say so you have this recursion relation between the uh, Klebs codon coefficients. So if you look at the table, so let's start with maybe L equals to one. Let, let me change the color because now you will see where those coefficients are coming from. So if let's uh, then take the upper sign, right? So if L equals to one, so you have something like uh, this one plus half, this gives you the set three over two. Remember what you're trying to do. You want to start with this. You, you don't really know which ones are the good quantum numbers. So you just want to expand GM as a linear combination. So you will have to find what these uh, Klebs-Gordon coefficients are. 
and they will be given by this square root messy formula with square root L minus blah blah. So I'm starting by putting L equals to one plus half this gives you three over two. And you know that um, M varies between minus um, minus L. So it will be going from minus three over two to minus half, half and three over two. So this formula will then give you the set of four um, states. Remember that we have eight states and we then have to form an eight by eight matrix. To try and diagonalize that entire matrix. But before we do that, we first had to compute the this club score on coefficients, which is what I'm trying to do. So let's check maybe I said this to be this one, the minus three over two. So you get minus three over two. Right equals to so this this coefficient here um l equals to one so you get two times one plus one so this just gives you the square root three and then this is l is one um minus let's say um okay let me start with the two over two right so this gives you l one so this is one minus three over two plus three over two. Um, the one that will survive will give you um, three and you get one half, right? And the other coefficient then would be one, right? Because I think this term will finish, right? The one that will be surviving because uh, you'll be left with one plus three over two plus a half. So is everyone uh, happy that this coefficient will, will vanish when you have uh, m equals to three over two? Because if you look, this is one minus three over two right? plus a half. One plus a half will give you three over two, which cancels. So this coefficient vanishes. The one that would be left would be this one, where you have one plus three over two plus the half. So this gives you um, three, right? Which is that. And we're left then with one half, three over two minus half gives you, um, I get one and a half. And you just then apply this formula to the other states, the state with minus a half, a half. So you're basically using this recursion formula to get your state. So the first state will be this one, three over two, three over two, will be given by um, one half, one half. And you can check the other states. So for the other states, you get, it's like, let me write all the other states that I calculated. So first state that you calculated. So you are just plugging uh, different, so you, M will be going from minus three over two to three over two, different values of these sets, and then check what the coefficients will give you. So three over two and three over two, using that regression relation, you found that this is the one that I explicitly showed, half, one, half, right? other one would be three over two half if you remember they say find l minus plus minus m plus one over two l plus one you can check that once you do it for the state you get square root one third one half one minus a half plus square root two over three one half zero minus a half and then you do it for three over two say minus three over two this gives you one half minus one minus one and minus a half right 
So then you do it for also, so we were doing it for L equals to one. You can also do it for L equals to zero. And you can check that you get, let me go back to, you can check that you get these these numbers so the one that i did was the three over three three over two you saw that you were sitting with square root three over square root three which is this one um the other one that i did was uh, the ones with so I also did this one and this one and the one with it, which is this one. So I only did them for the four of them, right? So is everyone happy with how you get the club's cotton coefficients? So to, to summarize what I did, right? This is what you have, you have JM, right? You want to expand this in terms of these other bases, which is the direct product J, J1, M1, J2, M2. So you know that those states, they are complete. So you write everything as J1, J2, M1, M2, J1, J2, M1, M2, right? This, this entire thing is one. So you still have to hit it on JM. And then you're trying to compute what these coefficients are. So to do that, you first had to insert a J. Uh, so let, let, let me go there. You inserted a J plus or minus. It acted on there. You know what happens there. Then you equated it when it hit on this state. That gave you a recursion relation between the curves scored on coefficients. And then you ended up with an expression involving this L plus minus or half. And then this will give you all these this, this states. Now, what then we have to do, because remember that the intermediate one, the intermediate effect, it's been made of two effects. Right? So you then have to compute the effect that is being due to Right. So the intermediate effect will be due to the fine structure plus the Zeeman. The fine structure one is the easiest one to compute because you had an expression for the fine structure. Right. So if you remember, you had E fine structure. Okay. Uh, I'll ignore, there was a term that was proportional to only E2 for now, I will ignore that term. So you get something like alpha squared E2 over N squared over N squared, right? N J plus a half minus three over four. Was there a question? Right, so you, First, have to calculate these fine structure ones, which are much easier to do. So uh, let's see. So J, if you look there, J can take values half and also three over two. So let me start with calculating the fine structure for J equals to a uh, half. So I have E fine structure. This gives you minus 13.6 over N is given by 2. So you get 2 squared, 2 squared multiplied by 2, 4 right, times 2. This is N right, divided by J, J plus a half minus three. So I've factored out the factor of four. Right. And this then gives you minus 18 point. I'll call this factor, they call it gamma, 
uh, so let's see, let's just call it gamma. And when J equals to a half, so this gives you uh, eight divided by, remember that you either have J equals to half or J equals to three over two. So let's start with uh, the state with J equals to half. So that gives you, here you get half plus half, which will just give you one minus three. Okay. So along the, the diagonal, you are going to get this, I think this just gives you minus five gamma. And these are the states that correspond to J equals to a half. So um, this will be uh, this. So we have calculated. So what I'm saying is that this state here, right, which corresponds to J equals to half, J equals to half, if you check the other one, it's not half, and the only remaining half that you will be getting. Uh, so these numbers here are due to the fine structure Hamiltonian. Right? The other state, which would be this when you have uh, J equals to, let's say three over two, we still have to compute that. So if you look at that formula, you get uh, minus gamma, you get eight divided by, j plus half. So just focus on this j plus a half minus the three. So you get uh, three, so it's 1.5. Right? Substitute the, the 1.5 plus the half. This gives you uh, two. So you get eight divided by two minus the three. This gives you um, four minus three, which is one. So this stays with J equals to half, the fine structure contribution will give you a factor of one, which are these ones. And if you remember, right. So what you have calculated so far are these diagonal matrix elements for the fine structure constant. Um, but now you then have to calculate the Q, right? So let's say Q will be the ones, it, it will be LZ plus two LZ. You still have to calculate what this operator will be doing once it operates on, uh, okay, let's just check one, two, and then all of them, uh, right. So we have to also check what happens to Q when it adds on LS, LZ plus two LZ. And remember that the way that I'm enabling my stuff, you get the last thing, I just MS plus M. So, okay, let's check maybe when it adds on Q6. Right. So I'm saying that for now I am computing the H due to the Zeeman effect. And if you remember, it comes with this thing there. So this state is fine. This state that are not combinations of any state. So if you check what happens on Q when it acts there, so you get um, L. Okay, let's do the simplest one. What's happening when this X on zero? half, zero, and half, what do you get? So LZ, when it adds on the state, will give you, um, say, zero, because the ML is being labeled by that. So that acting there gives you that eigenvalue there. And then two, so this gives you plus two times a half. So this just gives you one. Um, which is this, this number here. So beta is proportional to minus um, the external multiplied by the ball magneton. So for the first state, this is the number on the diagonal that you are going to get. So the five gamma I explained. So is everyone happy um, that the five, ga five gamma was coming from the contribution from the fine structure?
the beta we just calculated now when we were doing the LZ plus two SZ. Similarly for the other one, if you check, right? So if you look, remember that you are trying to find HZ, which will have this Q. So when it adds, so let's say that it's acting on this vector, you get zero, half, zero minus a half. So remember it's two as Z plus Z. And these numbers here is ML, this is M S. So you get when LZ acts on this side two, you get first you get zero plus two, and this is minus, right? So this gives you a minus half, and it gives you um, just a minus one. But remember that the Zeeman effect is minus of mu dot e. So once you multiply that this minus with that minus, you end up with a plus, right? So this gives you this plus beta there. And similarly, this is the contribution from this third state when the so when the Zeeman Newtonian, which I linked plus Q, when it adds on this state, let's see what, what we get. So it's acting on the third state, which is one, half, one, and a half. What do you get as the eigenvalue? Remember that these numbers here are this is ML and this is MS. And Q is given by LZ plus two Z. This is the part that is coming from the uh, what do you call the Zeeman effect. So, what are the what is the final result there? As the eigenvalue that I'm looking for. So it's acting on psi three, and I've changed basis from this dm into this j1, j2, m1, m2. So m1 is the orbital magnetic number, and m2 is the uh, spin number. Right. So again, when L acts on this state, this is basically question two, right? You know that when L acts on state say with quantum number with any state right it gives you m just that here you have two of these m so you have to choose one of them the one which is which is associated with that lz so it will give you this one there plus two and then as z when it adds on this state it gives you I'm one happy with this notation. Okay, let me just go back and try and explain what I did. Um, Okay, so I'm saying that Q3, which is just proportional to the Zeeman Hamiltonian, is given by this LZ plus 2SZ as operators, right? And I've changed notation basis. So initially I had JM. Now I have these basis vectors that are being labeled, say they have ML and MS. Right. There are some quantum numbers here, which is J1 and J2. So my question is, let's start with Z. What is this? 
passing through ML and MS. Okay. So for simplicity, let's say that this was zero and this was a half. What is the end result of this operation? Is everyone happy with this, these things, L and M? Like when, what is the answer here, right? Is everyone happy that this is just M each bar, L and M? And if this was L squared, this will give you L, M, this will give you L, L plus one each bar squared, hitting on L, M, right? So we have this operator, which is L, Z, Right. And the third number corresponds to this magnetic number there. So when LZ is busy acting on this state, you only look at this number here, which is the third number, which is ML. Right. This L corresponds to this operator there. Similarly, this S corresponds to this operator there. So let's see, let me write it like this. J1, J2, if you have ML and MS, when this operator is on this state, the answer that you should be getting is ML, J1, J2, ML, and MS. Similarly, when SZ acts on J1, J2, ML, and MS, what should I get? Yes, J1, J2, ML, and MS. And these are the matrix elements that I need because I first have to, it's the same with the harmonic oscillator. If you remember, you first act on X acting on N, you get something, and then you sandwich the other vector. So at the moment, what I'm doing is that I'm just trying to find what is these operators LZ, SZ acting on the states. Right. So let's say, let's go back to maybe half and half. Um, so you have this state half, half. And if you write this in terms of the, okay, maybe, maybe let's do three over two and three over two. Now, what is the problem? I, I don't really know what is LZ when it acts on this thing because these numbers here have been labeled by J and M. So what I did initially was then that I expanded in terms of this club scoring coefficients and I was able to write this three over two vector J M vector as some linear combination of the vector J2, ML, and MS. So for example, 3 over 2, 3 over 2, which, the, which is the one that I did explicitly, you will find that this is given by uh, 1 half, 1 and a half. Right? Now I know that the Zeeman Hamiltonian is given, it's proportional. There's this, uh, what, Griffith is calling beta, but up, up to this minus beta, there is this operator LZ plus two SZ, right? Say I was acting maybe, can't remember if this is the third state. Right? If I'm acting on the third state, I get three over two, three over two, and I have expanded this as Clebsodon coefficient. So I get LZ plus 2 as z right i don't know what these things do on j and m but i do know what they do on this other state one half one and half right so 
z when it acts on the state one half. Um, yeah, I might give you the n equals to three case, right? For so the n equals to three state, you repeat what I did, you write the class cordon coefficients, you expand everything in terms of these things, and then you are going to have the Zeman Hamiltonian acting on your states. So you have to be able to do this. So okay, let me do this again. So what is LZ when it acts here? Remember that it only reads this number. It reads the third number in the row, so it, it will only give you that one there. So it gives you one, one, half, one, and half. And then similarly, when SZ adds on one, half, one, half, right? It reads the last column number there, so it just gives you a half one half one half okay so is everyone happy with how these operators act remember that we don't really know what the good quantum numbers are but we can expand them in terms of the club's codon coefficients and the club codon coefficients are these c numbers that are sitting in front of this expression and i did that for you so it's just uh, looking at the table that you have been given. Right. Calculate the fine structure constant. Now, the fine structure contribution is easy to get, and it will be along the which, as I kept writing, it's this LZ plus two Z. So let's say that it's acting on um, let's say that the Zeman Hamiltonian is acting on the state, right? So HZ, which will be LZ plus 2SZ, you don't know what it does on GM, but you can know definitely what it will do once you have expanded everything in terms of the Klebs Gordon coefficients, right? So if you look, start with LZ. So when LZ acts on one half on this thing here, right? What what will I get? LZ, right? You get zero because it reads it there. So you get zero of the original vector plus, and then when LZ is acting on uh, the same vector size six, you get two times, uh, let's say, uh, a half. Of the same vector, so this will give you one half zero half. Right. So this just gives you this vector, and when it acts here, right, just notice um, what will happen. So you, this will give you two times a one times the same vector plus it's it's. LZ, so it's just one times LZ, which is that number, plus two times minus a half. So this vector is not. Similarly, you can check that when the Zeman Hamiltonian X, that vector is not there. Right? So let's say that now you have, let's say that you've just calculated H Zeman acting on psi five. Right? Remember that for degenerate perturbation theory, you have to form a matrix. And your matrix elements are alpha, beta. Last time I called them W, but they are formed of this overlap, H with beta. So you have already calculated what is H acting on psi 5. It's just this beta, right? So you calculate, you, and these vectors, remember that K1, the vectors are orthonormal. So once you hit with psi five, psi five, you end up with just two over three. And if you check at the column for psi five, the row number five, it's this, it's this number, two over three. Right. So let's try and see, you do the same thing for that vector. But there will be of diagonal vectors because if you check, but remember that these vectors are orthonormal. So once you calculated H Z on uh, on psi five, 
you are happy that this is the vector that you get, right? Similarly, when you act on a Zeman in size six, right? You can check um, this vector vanishes because, as I said, it, it's one. The eigenvalue will be one plus two times minus a half, which is zero. So the, that term vanishes there, but you still have this vector. So because they are normalized, psi six, psi six will give you, if you write everything down, one over three, one half, zero half, one half, zero half, right? Which will just give you a third, but you still have to multiply this, this by beta. So um, if you check the six vector or six line, you will get a one over three beta. But if you look, let me just change, change numbers. All these vectors are orthonormal. So um, except now what happens when you have psi five and psi six, they give you the same vector when there's the man Hamiltonian act. So the other element that is not zero will be psi five and psi six, right? Because this vector is orthonormal to this vector. So if you look, you might get something it will just give you two over three of beta. So your your matrix then will end up looking something um, you will have of diagonal for five, six, and um, six, five. And you do the same thing, right? The Zeeman Hamiltonian, when you take on this vector, um, this gives you, this vector here will give you two times the half minus the half. So this vector vanishes when H Zeman adds on that vector. And you will be left with this vector because this will just give you two times. This gives you the eigenvalue here, right? You read them from there. So this gives you zero plus two times minus a half, which is just minus one. So this vector survives. Similarly, this vector will not survive. Remember that your operator is 2LZ, not it's FZ plus 2SZ. So you take this number and add half of that. So, and again, this vector, this, these two vectors are the same. So the other elements that will not vanish will be psi, uh, psi 7, psi, and psi 8, psi 7. So all, in all, you can go ahead and compute these things, right? This five is coming from the fine structure, this beta here. So beta was what happens when HZ adds on the vector. And these are the numbers that you get. They differ by a sign. Similarly, you compute the other ones. And these are the vectors that I was trying to show you that they don't vanish, these off diagonal ones. Right. But what do you, what then do you notice that your vector then splits into two by two irreducible matrices? So you can try to diagonalize them. So you you can let me erase everything. Right. You can then try to diagonalize them. But for the first two by two matrix, right? So if you put a minus lambda there minus lambda, you can read off what the eigenvalues are. So the first eigenvalues might, will be the five gamma minus beta. This is lambda one, lambda two. Now remember that I'm ignoring the other E2, which is just the 13.6, but you can read off what your um, eigenvalues are. The other one will be, the second eigenvalue will be five gamma plus beta. Similarly, lambda three, lambda four. So these ones are fine. So the only thing that you have to check will be these two by two matrix there. You have to try and diagonalize it. So you subtract the lambda, subtract the lambda. Um, I think this one I can do. Uh, okay, maybe I should do it there. Right. So you have matrix which, if you try to diagonalize it, so this is the uh, gamma minus two over three beta minus lambda 
you get square root 2 over 3 beta square root 2 over 3 beta and then you get 5 gamma minus a third beta minus lambda but we try to diagonalize this so let's just uh, multiply everything out you get gamma minus 2 over 3 beta so if for example i give you the n equals to 3 state the first thing that you could do you use the recursion relation that i gave you for the cleft cordon coefficients to express all your jms in terms of j1 j2 m1 m2 then you calculate the fine structure contribution then you um, try to find the Zeeman Hamiltonian, which is whose proportional to LZ plus two SZ. And once you've done that, then you diagonalize matrix then will probably split into um, matrices. And then you diagonalize that. So let's see what we get here. So it's these two. So you get five gamma minus one over three beta minus lambda, uh, minus 2 over 3 beta squared, I think this is 9. And then let's see, you get the lambda squared from these two. So you just get lambda squared minus lambda. Uh, let's say this acting on 5 gamma minus third beta, right? This you just multiply everything out. And then the other one would be the minus lambda in there. So it multiplies this one. So we get uh, plus gamma minus two over third beta plus some other constant. But you, you can see that this is the um, exactly this contribution. Okay, I didn't write. Um, right. You end up with something like that and then you solve so you get lambda equals to that but then you do the same thing for the remaining two by two matrix which is this one again you find your um right. and these are the eight again values that you find it's just that I ignored this E2, which is as the constant 13, six. So to, to summarize, if I give you maybe four n equals to three, the first thing that you do, look at, uh, you can try to compute them or you can look at them. So you find the Klebs codon coefficients. So as I was saying, you, this is, you, you write these vectors in terms of J1, J2, M1, M2, right, J1, J2, M1, M2, right, with JM. These are just C numbers which are called Klebs Gordon coefficients. So let me write everything out. So this will give you J1, J2, M1, M2, right, JM. Right. These are these coefficients that we've been calculating, like maybe square root of two over three or whatever. And I gave you a recursion relation for them. And then you are left with J1, J2, M1, M2. So then you look at what happens when the Zeeman contribution acts, which is it's minus uh, what I called beta given by LZ plus 2SZ. You will end up with states some coefficients, but with states that will be um, labeled by ML and MS, J1, J2. And then when LZ adds on this, you extract that, and then to SZ, you get that. Then you form a matrix, which will be, which is what you did. Right? For example, with psi five and psi six, then for n equals to three, you're going to get a 18 by 18 matrix. Then you try to diagonalize that, which is what it has been. So I think 
So is everyone clear? Um, they in every is every matrix the sum of both H Z. Um, it's every matrix the sum. Let's see. Yes. So if you look at the with the manifest, right? Or the strong Z manifest, you, you you always look at this matrix or that matrix. But for the metric for the intermediate Z manifest, you don't really know which one will be uh, which one will be the dominant perturbation you have to treat them as a sum so you, you know um maybe you ignore that one and then you treat um h bore h hamiltonian with this true and then you use maybe j m as good quantum numbers and then you treat this as a perturbation so it's not always that for weak and strong it's not always that it will be a sum but for intermediate you have to include bo both effects, right? So if you look at the um, matrix, right? See, this is coming from, uh, this one was coming from the fine structure. This one was coming from um, the um, HZ. But you can also, I think in one of the exercises, they do ask you to consider maybe what happens when uh, bit small, do you uh, recover the results that you get for the week or the, yeah. But I won't, it's like, I won't give you the n equals three because it's going to be, you have to look at 18 by 18 matrices and go around finding what is AZ. First, we have to do this uh, long-winded clubs cordon coefficient. Right, so yeah, these are the um, the eigenvalues, and then you can plot all these eigenvalues, and this is yeah, this will be what you get. Okay, right. Um, just to check, you had done these you've got on coefficients before, or this is the first time you see them. Okay, since there's no answer, we've seen them before. So it's not that I was talking something new. Um, I think maybe last 15 minute break, and we will continue with the hyperfine splitting. And if we do have the time, then we go to the variational principle. I'm still, uh, let me stop recording. Um,